So continuing along from the previous video where we sculpted this rock inside of zebras, in this video we are going to cover three main things. We are going to decimate this entire rock asset to a lower poly one, then we are going to UV unwrap this inside of blender and finally we are going to texture it inside of substance painter and along with that I'll be giving you some free substance material for you to follow along uh, in this tutorial so get the, so let's get started so here i'm inside of zbrush and the first thing i want to do is go to here go to this subtle menu and inside of subtle menu you can see here is our current asset that we are working on i simply want to just duplicate it so here you can say duplicate so hit duplicate and just hide one of them so here is this second one here is the original one and if you click on this one this will be active by default so just hide it and currently i'm switch using this one so yeah this one so next what you want to do is go to z plugin up here and inside of decimation master here you will see pre-process current so click this and zebra shell thing for some time so once this pre-processing part is done i'm again going to go inside of z plugin and under decimation master i can set the amount of decimation polygons that will be kept inside of the mesh once it is decimated or i can choose from the preset menu so i'm probably going to select from the preset menu because this is what I actually want, which is basically 35 to 40k for a lot zero asset. So here I'm going to click 35k and just wait for a few minutes until it is decimated. All right. So as you can see, our viewport suddenly got a bit faster than what was earlier because if I go to the wireframe view, you can see that the there is very less amount of polygons which is actually not that bad that I can still zoom in and check out the details and these are still uh, awesome looking for my distance like this so anyways so this is our decimated mess which we have around 34 polygons which is the active points and if i go to the original mesh make it visible and now if i look at it just look at how dense this one so here this i'm going to use this as the high poly mesh and this one as the low poly mesh so yeah so from here on i'm going to export this high poly mesh as high poly mesh obviously so here you can see i have selected this mesh and just click export and wherever you want to save it just go in the directory and save that file so So the naming part is not that important but however for organization you can name it so i'm going to name it like rock ipoly which is hp and it will be exported as an obj so save so this might take some time so here we have exported the high poly mesh so let's go to the low poly one make it visible so here we have like again 34 34k polygon so export this one as well so here i'm going to name it rock low poly then save it and yeah we, we are probably uh, done with zbrush for now the next step will be of course if we are wrapping the mesh for it to back so let's exit out of zbrush and let's go to blender all right so i'm inside of blender and right now the first thing i'm going to do is import the low poly rock asset so here import webfront.obj then go to our asset directory and just import it in so let me find it 
So here lock low poly import and here we have our low poly asset and if I go to edit mode it's still a bit high poly looking but but this can work out so one thing to keep in mind always whenever you are whenever you are dealing with high poly and low poly object is to never not even in the weirdest situation don't move the asset from its origin point wherever it is just keep it that way and unwrap it because if you try to move it and maybe like move it in some other location like here and and the issue that arises is that the high poly that you have exported is still on this old position and once you move this low poly to another position and when you put it for back inside of like substance painter or designer there will be no initial or the final position to bake the maps so which will basically result in which will basically result in what should i say um, it won't bake yeah. that's the simplest answer so that's the first thing to keep in mind not to move your asset from its place wherever it is let it be just and and go ahead and unwrap it and the second thing is that as you can see we have a lot of complex surfaces like this is protruding out this one is as well and here we have another one and one word of caution that i want to give you is that as long as you have less number of uv islands that will be present here that that's the bet better choice like if you try to like make a seam here like separate this part as well this part as well and all these uh, smaller parts and you try to create a seam for each one and make them separate that will basically result in smaller uv islands and which basically means that there will be less amount of pixels available for baking and as a result of which if you even is 4k baking textures that will also be blurry so the rule of the thumb while baking is to keep the least number of uv tiles as possible so generally the optimal or the most optimized amount of uv tiles that you can get away with during baking is basically four or five so and don't worry about this all these shading issues all of them will go over once you have baked so next step is to uv unwrap this rock texture sorry rock assets so here i am in edge mode and i am going to go through and mark sim for this complicated part of the rock and once i am done with that i am going to time lapse the rest of the yeah, uving process and then i'm going to show you how to create uv islands from that so as you can see this feature is not so complicated but not so easy either so let's go through that and let's see from where we should start so here probably i'm going to start from here and you can hold on control to select multiple edges and create an edge loop around this feature so let's see how so hold on control click on here and then let's go to here as well so probably i'm going to keep it near to this edge and then here and i want this piece to be separated from like this hard edge around the rock so for that i will Try to keep this uh, seam as much as nearer to this sharp turns and cuts. So this should be going through here and then down through here to probably through this part. So let's do this. So let's hold on control and let's probe. And for you to uh, not lose this seam or the edge that you have selected, I advise you to 
keep marking seams as much as you can so here i have pressed ctrl e and press mark seam and then let's continue along with that so let's go through here and probably i'm going to select this this part and then go through here and maybe through here and like yeah and what i can advise you to do during all this complicated viewing process to keep patience and take your time because it is a bit of a complicated process not gonna lie but it can be done if you have a bit of patience and decide on how you want your uvs to look and if you have no idea about how to uv even the basic stuff i advise you to go through some beginner tutorials before following this one And you might think that while you select the edges you can see this all these sharp corners and a natural question might come to your mind that if you do bake this uh, shape and and there are all these op this seams just openly lying around on the rock and it might get some seams issue once you add textures but the answer is there will not be any because once you bake the high poly over the low poly all these seams are going to get covered with details from the high poly one and then if you add textures and maybe we try try planar projection you will most probably don't have any form of like tiling or seams issue at all and i'll go through that part as well to avoid that kind of issues if there appears to be any so here as you can see it was quite easy and i just unwrap this shape quite easily so let's press u and unwrap this one so hit u unwrap so forget about this bigger mess just focus on this one as you can see it came out to be quite well actually and to visually visualize it even better i'm going to on the base color i'm going to add an image texture so image and here i'm going to create a new one 1024 i'm going to use an uv grid so uv select uv grid and hit ok so let's see in the material plate. so here as you can see ignore all this rest of the part just focus on this one it's perfectly square no issue at all so as you can see it's pretty simple actually if you have the basic idea of adding seams and uv unwrapping the shapes so from now on i'm going to time lapse the rest of the part you can follow along if you want and i'll see you in a bit once i have unwrapped all these details so see you in a bit
okay so here i'm finally done with the uv unwrapping part of the model and if i go to edit mode and you can see i have already packed our uv islands and for that you have a few options to pack your uvs so here the first option is going through the uv and under uv tab you can see there is this pack uv option and the pack island option both of them basically do the same thing i haven't found any difference in these two but i have another add-on called this uv pack master and in this i have an i have an option to pack as well and generally i have found out that this add-on does a better job compared to what this function does uh, through vanilla blender so you always have the option to do your uh, unwrapping through this process and if you could afford this add-on you can go ahead and do this as well so yeah so next process is going to be baking this model and for that i'm going to be using substance painter and you can do it in marmoset or if you're using x normal that's another great option but substance painter is generally useful because you can do the texturing along with that process and yeah, for that i prefer substance painter above rest of the software and one thing that i want to talk a bit about is that i told you that you could have a least amount of around four or five uv islands to have the most optimal performance but while unwrapping i found out that since it is a very complicated model you might need to go overboard and add a few more so here you can see i have quite a few of them and if possible try to keep it to a minimum to around four or five or five or six but if the model gets complicated and you have no other option then please go overboard and have some more equivalence to work with and so let's hop over to substance painter and see our breaking process and, and let's see if it needs more improvement or if it works by default how we have unwrapped so far so yeah let's see you on substance painter so here i'm inside of substance painter and i'm going to import our low poly mesh so go up here file press new and here i'm going to select our low poly mesh so go to select and wherever you have your asset find it and select it i'm going to pick it up from here rock low poly for texture open and i'm going to select the resolution to be around 248 we can obviously change it later but let's take it 248 for now select opengl and everything looks all right to me and hit ok okay so here we have our low poly mesh and before we move any further I have a few settings to adjust so up here I'm going to activate post effects so click here activate post effects and under tone mapping I'm going to change it from linear to log and it turns darker so first activate temple and tearlazing and down here under color profile I'm going to use this SS for substance painter which is this file and I'm going to link it down in the description it's very useful so here we have our scene view and then in this tab I'm going to set the quality to around very high and now let's go to our back setting so here click back mesh maps and I'm going to select the texture of 248 for now and I'm going to uncheck ID and everything seems okay for now and here I'm going to import my high poly mesh so click here and under under the here I'm going to select rock high poly so click rock high poly click open 
and and from my experience i'm going to set these two options to around 0 0.1 so like 0 0.1 0 0.1 and let's hit back and check if it uh, yeah, and check if our results are usable so back select a texture and you can s select back select a texture or back rock texture both works the same so let's hit back select so here you can see our back result and it looks super awesome and as you can see we have all our details brought to our low poly mesh after backing and here you can see all those details that we have sculpted in zebras are retained and as i have said in our zebras tutorial that don't add minor minor details and reason is this because since we don't have any low and granular shapes uh, here we have all these high bigger details and are retained so beautifully and i have baked it in 4k again uh, once i have shown in the tutorial that was in 2k and as you can see if i rotate our light you can see all these details and everything looks super awesome right here you can see uh, the maps by pressing B on your keyboard. So B. So here is the wall space normal. The AO map. Curvature. Position. Thickness. And our normal map. And as you can see the normal map holds quite a lot of details. And even though we had mark seams everywhere in our mess. But even then you can't visibly see any of these seams after baking and that's the power of baking a high poly mesh to a low poly one and if you try to do that uh, with a normal 3d geometry and you mark seams without taking care and after baking most likely you will have your seams everywhere visible to the naked eye so yeah that's a big advantage of using baking for meshes so yeah so that was the baking part of our tutorial and let's jump to our texturing part so to texture our asset we have a few ways to texture it the first and the most common way is to create layers after layers and stack upon different filters and mask and generators and create our materials and this is good this is good for a single asset but if you have to create that loads of asset let's say for your game or let's say for your visual effects this can take a lot of your time and even if you try to minimize it through some procedural way let's say using substance dna that will to take some amount of your valuable time so to compensate on that i have created this smart material that is specifically designed for any form of rock asset like it, this one and you decided to make your own this smart material will work on that as well and this will be available down in the link in the description for free you can go ahead and download it so what i'm going to do is here this is called ultimate rock shader and i'm going to just click and drag here so just watch and all of a sudden we have such a beautiful texture with 4k quality of uh, details like i can zoom in all and you can't see any form of like texture blurring or even in that case no seams at all like i have created uh, seams during the unwrapping stage like here and probably across this part as well but there is no seam at all and that's the power of creating a, a big texture and la laying above that this kind of high quality smart materials that works on its way now let's just open it up and just quickly go through all the layers that i have created so i'm going to turn off all this one and let's start from the basic one so here for the basic one like it is a triplanar projection so this box is happening you can disable it through like clearing clicking here and let's right click and here i have a base color which is a brownish color and then i have 
plugged in the high roughness and normal maps the, uh, for a rock generic rock texture that I downloaded from online and they just create this uh, base for us to work upon so above that I have created a color variation layer with just as the t shirt with the layer and creates a bit of varying color here and there and all these masks that you can see in all these layers are all coming from the smart ma mask section so i have not created any form of complicated mask myself because if it's already available why is it spend a lot of time getting our own mask so if i just all click it here you can see the mask so this is our second layer then let's go to a third layer which is again a color variation layer and this adds this small dust layer on the crevices and corners of our asset here as you can see and above above this it adds this brownish tint above the, our asset and it and it mainly serves as like if there is dust of created by the wind and most often these parts are, are the first that will face the wind direction so for that i have like created this mask and like the color settles in on these sharp edges so yeah so for this layer this is the last layer we we're talking about then this layer let's see yeah so this is another layer almost like the same this uh, this adds up to the cor sharp corners of the asset and it basically uses the curvature map of, of our asset so as you can see all these uh, edges are highlighted and also there are some small texture variation that i have created with like let's let me expand it I can yes so here are two, two three mask uh, editor and if I if I disable uh, the other two doesn't make any difference this is the top one that is actually working the hard part so yeah this is the fourth layer then above that this is the fifth layer and if I enable it it adds this like darker contrast to our asset so if i disable it it was just normally like there was no contrast uh, among all the colors uh, all, almost all of them blended with each other so with this one you can see this harsh like color variation whenever there is like sharp corners or like crevices so if i and uh, it's almost same sim similar to this th third layer so this is our third layer and this is our fifth layer so almost works on our edges and here i have a dirt generator that adds like all these small patches of uh, of mask uh, that i'm using and probably this is it is also a generic generator so yeah this is the fifth layer that adds up the dark uh, contrast in our asset and it's important to make the uh, uh, sharp corners more visible to our eye and that way it makes the shape more interesting so that was the fifth one let's this e1 e02 are all like works on the edge specifically so it's better on this one so there is not much change but if i like this, uh, you can see all these small corners are affected by this one so if here so it works on the edges again but here the edges are not like all flowy in uh, all there are some breakings uh, breaks and variation among all the edges and this is due to this black and white spot multiplied over our mask and 
after that this is the second variation to that and if i enable it so the second one probably not a lot of difference from this one as well so if i go to this one this is another one i just duplicated it and like made some smaller variations so as you can see the same one and let's see a micro damage like this is a, this one is an interesting one so as you can see if i zoom in there's still not much like micro level of details or like any form of like pores or anything this layer has that part so if i enable it here immediately you can see there are all these like small patches or like pores you can say that have all this moss or green parts that are like appearing all over this wherever there are these pores and small patches and this generally occurs if i enable the mask view you can see that this is only appearing on this side and uh, and all the sharp edges that are coming out uh, not on like surface level on this side and it's because like i'm assuming if the air is flowing in this direction then the, probably some debris arcade out uh, along with the wind and let's say it hits the rock and creates all these pores on this direction so you have to be like very specific about what you are aiming for and for that i suggest you look at some reference take your time and study them as b quite well before like going ahead and creating your 3d asset because if i had to create all this uh, pores or details all over our rock then it will probably look more computer generated than anything so now that i have added this in one direction it most likely tells a story that the wind is flowing in this direction or like something happened that just affected one side of the rock so this is another layer that it spot just smaller details like let's say enable here is a small patches of rock that are like broke broken out or something like let's say here as you can see there are small patches and like most of them are like flowing nature like they are all like moving in this direction so another small detail so yeah so these are the details and you can always go ahead and after you download this uh, sh smart material you can always change all these parameters and if you want some rock asset that's like works on like nordic environment you can change the colors looks and you can also go to the baseline and change all this like height roughness and normal maps from other textures that you have made or like downloaded and this will completely give you a different meaning and different look to your asset so with that out of the way though so here we have our asset and let's say let's export it so here up here go to file then here export texture and i have selected out put template as vray next because for rendering i generally use marmoset or vray and if you have textures that like generally works with a 3d so most likely they will work with a real-time engine as well so i use vray for that and then here i have selected the template as vray as well i have exported the texture and let's jump over to marmoset and see what we have there so here I am inside of tool bag and I have set up a fairly simple scene with three lights complementing each other and as you can see the scene is very basic and here are my render settings if you want to copy it. Uh, I am gonna use ray tracing so that the light is more physically accurate and also I have set up a transparency layer for that and with some simple compositing and paint over tricks you can really get a portfolio ready piece and if i jump over to photoshop as you can see the render looks drastically different from what we are seeing on the viewport so if i open up this group 
you can see we have our basic render then i have a background then i simply created a new layer with blend mode set to soft light and i take have taken the red color from the background and just painted over it so if i just turn it on and off you can see the effects and same for this side i have taken the blue color or the cyan color to be specific and just painted over that layer and reduce the opacity to around 50 to 60 percent and here are my renders so this one's first this one the second render this is the third one and finally this is the fourth one so if i zoom in you can see i have rendered it in 4k here is the resolution and it's portfolio ready and you can post it online and with that out of the way here i'm going to conclude my tutorial series on rock sculpting and rock texturing and as i have told you i have i'll have all the links available down in the description so you can download and follow along in the tutorial if you want and i hope you learn a thing or two and if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you want to stay updated for any future tutorials that will be coming in this channel please subscribe and you can also like and share this video so that more and more people can find it and you can also tag me all your renders if you have follow along with this tutorial and you have managed to create something so please tag me on instagram and i'll try to go through all of them and with that i'm going to conclude this series and i'll see you in the next video goodbye